five things Protestants wish Catholics knew. Why am I making this video? Well, I made another video recently called Five Things That Catholics Wish Protestants Knew. And the reason why is because if we're gonna have a meaningful dialogue with one another, we have to understand what each other believes and our positions as accurately as possible. Because I tell you, it's very frustrating to answer objections about Catholicism when they're based on untruths or misunderstandings. So that's why I made the last video. So why am I making this video? Well, because this needs to go both ways, plain and simple. So how can I make this video when I'm a Catholic? Well, quite simply, it's because I used to be a Protestant. I was a pastor for 22 years, so I'm fully aware of what it's like to be a Protestant and actually to be an anti-Catholic Protestant for quite a bit of time in my life. And I remember when I was thinking about Catholicism and the conversations that I would have with, with Catholics, there were some times where I would become frustrated and think to myself, I wish they understood this about me as a Protestant. So it hasn't been that long, about five years for me since I've become Catholic, and I still remember the way that I used to think about a lot of things. And so I thought it would be helpful to share with you these things for the purpose of helping us have meaningful dialogue. I'm not here trying to be disrespectful to anybody, quite the opposite. I'm not here trying to put down anybody or belittle anyone's positions. I'm just here trying, honestly, to help my Catholic brothers and sisters understand that maybe some of the ways that we talk to our Protestant friends aren't exactly helpful. And some of the things that happen to us in conversations, hey, we might be guilty of doing the same thing. So, before I begin, let me just share. These are not all comprehensive of all people everywhere. These are just the five things that I thought of this morning when I was kicking around making this video. So, if you have others, please let us know in the comments, and I'm sure that you will. All right, here we go. Number one, not all Protestants are the same, which is kind of ironic that I have to make this because one of the talking points of Catholicism with relation to Protestantism is how many different variations of, of Protestantism there are. But yet at the same time, we can have a tendency to lump all Protestants into one category when we say things like, well, we have Catholicism and we have Protestantism. I, I hate to break it to you, but there really is no such thing as Protestantism as a defined thing. So when you're having a conversation with, with a Protestant, you have to ask them about their specific beliefs. You can't just assume that because that person is a Protestant, they are going to believe the same thing that other Protestants you may have talked to in the past believe. For example, not all Protestants believe in sola scriptura. You know, I was a Methodist, and we believed in what's called the quadrilateral, which basically says that we believe our our truth is revealed to us through scripture, experience, reason, and tradition. Probably not in that order, but that's that's where that comes from. Other Protestants believe that God continues to reveal new things. So not every Protestant's going to have this sola scriptura mindset. There are many that do, but not everyone. So we have to remember not all have the same beliefs. And Consequently, not all Protestants worship in the same way either. You know, there are some Protestants that are like high church, like Anglicans and Lutherans, oftentimes that have a liturgy that looks very Catholic to, a, to a, a, an uneducated person that might not know the difference. Um, and other people don't. You know, sometimes we see, I'll see memes or whatever of like a mega church worship service with a rock band and a light show, and it'll just be like, oh, Protestants, you know, they don't have deep worship. But that doesn't give an accurate description of all Protestantism. So there are different types of worship. Additionally, there are Protestants that have different beliefs about things, like important things. Did you know that there are some Protestants who reject the Trinity? They're called like oneness Pentecostals. Now some would say, well, they're not even really Christians. But if you ask them, they would consider themselves Protestant Christians. And there are others who accept the Trinity. My, my point is this. There are so many variations when it comes to what Protestants believe, what they, how they worship, and how they look at the world. We can't just fit them nicely into one category when we're speaking about the difference between Protestants and Catholics, okay? So don't assume anything. Ask questions. Ask specific questions about what an individual person believes or thinks. Don't just lump them into something, okay? All right, number two. 
Protestants oftentimes have a deep faith that has changed their lives. Now, you might be thinking, well, well, okay, Keith, I get that, you know, but there are times I see Catholics accusing Protestants of just having a shallow faith. Well, your church is just all about the fast food and my church is about the gourmet meal, you know, and I understand what we mean when we say things like that, but sometimes when we can find ourselves judging other people's faith, Uh, personally and thinking because they're not Catholic, they don't have a a deep faith in Christ. Friends, that's just wrong to make those kind of judgments. We don't like it when they do that to us as Catholics, which a lot of them do, my friends. And and I don't know about you, but I, I... I don't react to that very, very uh, happily when a Protestant says to me, oh, well, because you're Catholic, you don't know the Bible or you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's one of the things I talked about in my last video. But we have to be careful that we don't do the same thing. I mean, I know plenty of Protestants that have deep faith, passionate faith in Jesus Christ, who have sacrificed and given up much for the sake of the gospel, my friends. We can never judge another person's faith as shallow or or weak. We can't do that, my friends. That's just wrong, uncharitable, and ultimately it's unhelpful in opening up a meaningful dialogue with our Protestant brothers and sisters, my friends. Number three, Protestants care and know about church history, my friends. Okay, that's something that, that they wish that Catholics knew. And sometimes I think that we can have this idea that, well, you know, if they just knew about church history, then they would have to become Catholic. And I and I know I know the quote. You know, to be to be steeped in history is to cease to be Protestant. And there's a lot about that that I relate to. But if we take that to mean that Protestants are just completely ignorant of church history or they don't care about it, that can be dangerous, my friends. Some Protestants know a lot about church history. Um, they may look at things differently. Well, they probably do if they're Protestant, but they may have been brought up with a different emphasis or, or a different viewpoint on how things are interpreted that we may disagree with, or we might be able to, to point at things and say, oh, are you sure it was really that way or whatever? But it doesn't mean that they don't know or care about church history. All right, number four, not all Protestants should be called schismatics, okay? Now, here's what I mean by that. I know I'm gonna have some Catholics lighten me up here going, but that's what they are. Well, let me just give you the reason why I'm saying this, okay? And it goes back to a personal story for when I was considering Catholicism, okay? I, I was in Rome on a pilgrimage with a bunch of Catholics. We had just gone to St. Peter's and we were having lunch and I was reflecting on everything I had seen that day and on that trip, really. And I was thinking to myself, man, can, can all of this really be true? Is the Catholic Church the church founded by Jesus Christ? It was really weighing on my heart, and I was really searching deeply. And a woman in our group, who I didn't really know very well personally, um, we weren't like friends, we didn't have like a close relationship, publicly and in front of the whole group, she starts chastising me and saying, you're a schismatic, and she I think what she specifically said was, how could you have left? How could you see everything that you've seen today, and how could you have left all of this? And I was like, I was totally caught off guard. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I didn't leave anything. I, I was born this way, right? I was born where I am. I didn't have this understanding of the Catholic faith and then reject it and walk away from it. But that's what she was accusing me of because... I was a Protestant. Now, you could trace back the Protestant denominations and sects to a schismatic act in the Reformation, okay? You can do that, and rightly so. But that doesn't make individual Protestants today active, intentional schismatics, okay? So it doesn't, it doesn't help to say that. For a lot of Protestants, they look at the world and they they look at and they see all these differences in all of these different denominations. And for them, Roman Catholicism is just one of those denominations. They haven't understood, many of them, that the Catholic Church goes all the way back to the beginning. Most Protestants don't consider themselves having walked away from Catholicism. They view themselves as just what they are. So, Calling someone a schismatic who didn't actively leave the Catholic Church, I don't think that's the right way to go. Now, if you're talking to a person who 
was raised Catholic, embraced the Catholic faith, believed the Catholic faith, and then willingly separated themselves from the Catholic faith, there you go. That's a schismatic, okay? But the, 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 the person who was brought up Baptist or Presbyterian or whatever, who is just learning about Catholicism, don't call that person a schismatic. Not helpful. That's not, that's not going to work, okay, my friends? All right, number five. What do Protestants wish Catholics knew? How about this one? Their faith. That's right. Protestants wish Catholics knew their Catholic faith. So many of the problems that we see with this misinformation and inaccurate representation, you know where it comes from? A lot of it comes from ill-informed or less than devoted Catholics who say and do stupid things, who misrepresent the church poorly, who don't know their own faith. So say all kinds of things that aren't true that a Protestant hears and goes, oh, I, my Catholic friend told me this thing or that thing or whatever. And that's crazy, but that's what the Catholics do because my Protestant or because my Catholic friend and told me, friends, we've got to know our faith. And I believe this with all my heart. Protestants, they wish that Catholics knew their faith so that when they had those conversations, what they were receiving from their Catholic friends was the accurate, best picture of Catholicism so they could know what it is, my friends. And that should, you know, put the onus on us. I know from my own perspective, I got to do a better job at that. You know, so here's what this can look like. If one of your Protestant friends has a question about the faith that you don't know the answer to, don't just sort of like guess your way through it. If you don't know, then say, hey, I'm not sure about that. I'm going to find out the answer and get back to you. Or grab the catechism and look it up. Or find a way to know. Ask someone who does know. Talk to uh, talk to someone who, who can explain it correctly. But don't just shoot from the hip when it comes to what the Catholic faith teaches. Get yourself in line and understand that. And you better, above all things, be living a life in faith that shows your Protestant brothers and sisters how amazing and how incredible it is to be a Catholic. So that when they look at you, they don't see someone and go, man, I don't want to be like that. We need to be people who our Protestant brothers and sisters look to and go, man, I don't know about all this Catholic stuff, but that person is so devoted to God and their faith is incredible and beautiful. Hey, I'll tell you what, that's one of the things that, that helped me become Catholic was seeing the Catholic faith lived out authentically with joy and with beauty. That made a big difference for me. And so did being able to talk to Catholics who didn't talk down to me because I was a Protestant, who didn't um, lump me in my little category, okay, but who were willing to have conversations with me and find out about what I believed, what I was going through, where I was coming from, and then they were able to show me the same on their perspective about what was true about Catholicism. It made a big difference, my friends. So again, I hope to my, my Protestant brothers and sisters that none of the things I said you took disrespectfully. Again, that's not my intention. And to my Catholic brothers and sisters, I hope that you uh, were able to, to take something from this that's going to help you in your conversations when it comes to explaining and defending your Catholic faith. Friends, thank you so much. If you found this video helpful, I pray that you would share it. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to this video. And I also want to say a special thanks to those of you who support this channel and this ministry through Patreon and through my website. If you're looking for more information about what I do, you can check the website down in the description of this video, Down to Earth Ministry. There's a lot going on on this channel, and I'm excited to have the opportunity to share the beautiful faith that I have received, the Catholic faith. And I pray that you would discover it as well, my friends. Take care and God bless.